friends were in there just acting like little dickheads. <laughs> Looks like we're never getting Jackson Mahomes on this podcast. No. Um, speaking of criminals, uh, Brandon Miller, Al- star Alabama basketball player. So I don't, you probably haven't heard of this one. This one has been sweeping the college basketball nation. I'm not a big college basketball guy, but I keep up with the news. Um, so Brandon Miller, he basically what happened is a friend of his left his gun and where'd he go? My bad. My bad. There you are. Um, a friend of Brandon Miller's of Brandon Miller's. Yeah. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Left his gun in Brandon Miller's car, I think. So for some reason, Brandon Miller had this guy's gun. At 1 a.m. one night, the guy texts Brandon Miller and says, hey, can you bring me my gun? At 1 a.m., which is stupid. To, I don't even know why he had the gun, to be honest. If it was me, I'd be trying to get rid of that thing. I don't want to. If it's not my gun, I don't want it. I don't want to have to hold on to it, especially if I'm a star <laughs> basketball player. Yeah. And yeah. Text him. Um, Brandon Miller, you know, just immediately says yes. And he gets out of his car or he, you know, he goes and brings the, the gun to the guy. Well, we don't really know what happened too much. We don't have all the details, but basically this guy used a car and Brandon Miller's car to block, to blockade a woman in like corner her and kill. He killed this girl. The guy. Called what? This girl. Yeah. So Brandon Miller, he didn't commit the murder. He definitely didn't commit the murder. Um, but the kind of debate is basically he brought him his gun. His car was also there with two bullet holes. It had bullet holes in the windshield. But he had to have been involved. So Brandon Miller didn't get charged. His coach, uh, like a day or two days later, went out and said, yeah, I can't really control what goes on outside of practice. Just very tone deaf stuff. Brandon Miller played like the very next game that they had. Like he didn't, they didn't make him sit out. They didn't make him do anything. He just played. And it's like, why, you know, why is this kid playing? Oh, why? Huh? Is it a bad thing? I mean, I feel like, I feel like if you were even involved in a murder at some point, I would maybe take at least a day. He also yeah. dropped 41 in that game. Damn. <laughs> and his other team, like, I, I watched a little bit of the game, and you could tell they were very distracted. And it was, you know, they just – they were very distracted by the situation. But it actually helped his draft stock because he dropped 41 after being involved in a murder. Um, so the laws on this are very – I don't think – I think it's in Alabama. Um so the laws are very like if you didn't if you didn't pull the trigger you're not really involved, and he wasn't involved in pulling the trigger. But there's a lot of people who were like, "Well, he brought the gun to this guy." Yeah, but you can't really blame him. It's like I, it's like I, I you handed you know, me a gun and then I hand it back to you and well, you yeah, kill someone with it. That's the thing. It's did he know that this was going to go down, or did he just bring the gun and was like, "Okay, see ya." But it's like, why was his car there? And it had bullet holes in it. You know, that's the only thing. The pe- people are basically questioning, did he know that the murder was going to happen? Because if he did know that this person was going to do this, then he could be charged um, as a uh, like a conspirator, basically. Yeah, yeah. So that's kind of the question. A lot of people think he should be suspended because there is a no gun on campus policy, and he clearly had a gun on campus. Yeah, that's... So that, That's, I mean, obviously you can be suspended from school for things that you can't be arrested for. People don't realize that. Every, if you look, and the SEC is so crazy because every Alabama fan is saying, well, he didn't do anything. He didn't do anything wrong. He didn't do a single thing wrong. He should be able to play. And all the other teams <laughs> are like, well, maybe he should sit out for a game, at least a game. And I guarantee you, if he played for Florida, if he played for Texas A&M, if he played for Tennessee – all the Tennessee fans or Florida or Texas A&M fans would be saying the same thing Alabama fans are saying. Just, it's not your team. So, it's just, SEC fandom is so crazy. And then the coach being so tone deaf. And college coaches, they're like dictators of their 
of their, you know, their little school or, you know, whatever. Like, they run that shit, you know? They run everything that's going on there. So for him to say, oh, yeah, I don't control anything that goes on outside of practice is outrageous to me. It's like, dude, you can't be more dumb. You can't be more tone deaf. Like, what a little – what a dickhead for him to say that. Yeah. It's just wrong. Just completely yeah. – because when – because it's one thing if they're, like, professional athletes, but those kids are still kids. You know, they're college kids. They're our age. Like, they – those they coaches should. control that more than anything. Yeah. They control – they have their stu- – you know, they have their school schedules. They know when their homework is done or when it's due and if they've done it. They know everything about those kids. So it's like, bro, really? And it's, it's expected of college coaches. Their egos are massive, and they're just – I don't know. They're dickheads. What were, what were you going to say? I interrupted you. Um, 